Hey everybody, Cara here from Perspective Based Parenting. Um, welcome to day four. I just want to say quickly, if you're here on day four of this national crisis that we're dealing with where everybody's housebound and supporting each other, um, live time if you will, that's wonderful. If you find this series later, please continue to go from day one all the way through until whenever we finish because it will still apply very much to you in your home and the strategies are uh, comprehensive regardless of um, COVID-19 and if we're still dealing with this when you find it. So, so welcome. If you're new, it's good to see you. Feel free to go back to the other days because I, when I design series or when I design curriculums as a teacher, I really try to spiral them. Right? So the foundation piece is first and then we do the next layer and the next level. And so if you're able to do that, it will better prepare you to get the most out of each stage of the series. So just a quick review, day one, we talked about mindset. It's a new normal in our house, new environment. We have to figure out how to make the best of it. And so it means we have to switch our brain to this is reality, as opposed to what we would expect or what we would prefer. Um, the next day we talked about the power of a schedule and the methodology of what type of activities and what type of interactions you do within that schedule. Okay, so here we are today talking about, um, I said we were going to talk about plans, which are different than schedules, and they are, and we'll get there. Um, but I realized something as we were getting started with our day here in the house this morning, that you, my homework for you last night was to sit down and write a schedule, right? I know I have the kids this many hours. Here are some of the activities that I think I would like to include. Um, Open-ended, nice and tight schedule, depending on who you are, whatever. So as we were getting together this morning, um, there, there's two kids here. One's a very linguistic toddler and we can have, we can have adult conversations essentially. Um, I realized that an ever evolving schedule is what you're going to have, especially if this is the first time that you've been all day every day with the kids at home and kind of have those masses of expense of time in front of you. An ever evolving schedule. What do I mean by that? Just because you wrote it down on paper and just because that's what comes next is not what might actually come next. So this morning, what we did, um, which we do often, is we brainstormed, okay? We can't go anywhere today. The language that I'm using with kids, the little kids, is there's a lot of sick people in the world, and so it's our job to stay home so nobody else gets sick. I leave it right there. They don't need to know any more than that. That tells them where the parameters are. We're not getting in the car, we're not going to the store, we're not going to music class, we're not having play dates. There's a lot of sick people in the world and we are staying right here. So what can we do while we're here? So I invite toddlers to be part of my brainstorming process. What do you think we could do today? What sounds fun to you that we might be able to do today? Are they going to throw things at you that are totally impossible? Of course. Right? Let's go to Disneyland. That's not possible. Let's go to the grocery store. That's not possible. Are they going to throw things at you that might be possible? Yeah. You might be surprised at what they say they'd like to do that day. Um, so I sat down with uh, the toddler here and we came up with a ton of stuff that she thought she might want to do today. Um, and this is the current stage where we're at. But earlier today, and I have pictures of this along the whole way, so you'll get to see earlier today, all of these things were just lumped in the category section, in the possibility section. As we did them, we moved them up. As we completed them, we put a smiley face next to them. There's a few things I really want to point out 
with a model like this and why it's so essential you have some type of visual aid, okay? Kids between the ages of zero and five are learning how to process information best. They don't yet know what type of processing is the most effective for them, but there's three types. Auditory, top, top, top to them. Kinesthetic, we move things with our hands and the brain has a connection with our hands that helps us process information. And auditory, we see it. In this type of model, you've got all three. You're having an auditory conversation. I have some ideas of what we might be able to do today. Do you have some ideas of what you might like to do today? And you write them all down, right? It's visual in that way. Um, just a quick disclaimer, I, I'm not an artist. I never have been and I never hope to be. So I do my best to just jot a little something next down to the, to the word and I tell them, oh, this is a picture of mm, grapes. That's what we had for snack. And then the kinesthetic part comes in. When the child is done with the activity, they get to put the smiley face next to it. It marks a completion for them. Moving on to the next thing, which is what? Which is why I'm here, because this is when I get to do this. <laughs> okay, so I happen to have a magnet board, a whiteboard, right? That's magnetized. I happen to have these magnets um, just because there's stuff that we have around here. Yours might not look like this, but you can make something that looks like this out of all kinds of stuff in your house. Okay, so ever evolving plan. When we put together the list of stuff today, I didn't say, okay, first we'll do this and then we'll do this and then we'll do this. She said, take a bath. Great, so that's where we started. After bath, it very naturally evolved into a free play situation that went on for about 20 minutes, half an hour. And so we came back together, looked at our board, put that one there, put the smiley face next to it. She asked me for a snack. The snack ended up next. It just developed as the day went on. And so what I recommend today is if you wrote down all kinds of stuff last night and got yourself all organized and motivated and okay, you even like took out your arts and craft supplies, like set up a project or something, great. Just jot down all day long how things actually happened and in what order they actually happened. Compare them. Be open to an ever-evolving schedule within the boundaries of the things that you brainstorm to do with your kiddo. I'm very much talking preschooler here. If you have an infant uh, up until about 18 months old, you're probably, this, this is beyond them. I'm really in the highly cognitively developed 18 month, 20 month up to two and a half, three and up range here. Um, okay, so I promised you we would talk about plans. How is a plan different than a schedule? It's very different. Sometimes getting to the next thing on the schedule or deciding what thing comes next because they're just starting to get a little wonky and it's later in the morning and they're tired, but they haven't accepted they're tired yet. You know, that is can be really hard. That's when I pull out the, let's make a plan. Here's the plan. It's time for a plan. Any of those three statements work. It depends on whether your child is familiar with plan making. Okay. So assuming a child has never been part of this process and probably neither of you, let's go with, here's the plan. 
you're giving this information. It's not up for debate at this point. Okay. We will eat lunch, go potty, take a nap. That's our plan. Or if there's a real struggle to transition from the end of TV time into uh, whatever, you, whatever you were going to do next. So let's say you were going to do a TV show because you really had to get the dishes done, right? I'm not going to go deep into this right now, but I will tell you I'm not anti-media uh, screen. I'm not anti-TV. I do believe it's a tool to be used effectively. Otherwise, it's not useful at all if it's overused. That, that's my belief system. Um, so you were going to do a short show, a TV show, so that you could get something done. And then after that, you were going into your craft project. Okay, But getting out of the TV time is all of a sudden a big problem. It's a struggle. They don't want to stop you can make a mini plan before that happens. You can predict that situation because you've been in it many times, probably. I know I have. And before the TV even gets turned on, here's the plan. You say to your child, we're watching one show, then potty, then our cooking project. What's the plan? Have them repeat it back to you. If they're not fully capable of repeating back yet, here's what you do. Here's the plan. We're watching one show, then go potty, then our cooking project. How many shows are we watching? One. They can answer you that. Okay, so I don't know um, if you're catching on, but every time I say, let's make a plan or here's the plan, you notice that I'm doing it in groups of three things. So plans are like mini schedules inside of your larger schedule that support your child transitioning through or into something else. It kind of redirects their focus. Instead of this large picture, they can just focus on these small pieces to get them to the next place. I don't know if you've ever seen an episode of Dora the Explorer. Um, I know back in the day I saw way too many, right? Dora is all about groups of threes. We go through the muddy mud pit, over the tall mountain, and then have a fiesta to celebrate chocolate or something. I don't, it's been a really long time. <laughs> Why? Why this groups of three things? Well, I can tell you from an educational perspective, it teaches a myriad of skills. Um, first of all, it teaches, excuse me, order of operations. First, second, third. A sense of accomplishment, right? It teaches cognitive planning which comes into effect for them a little bit later, depending, depending on how old your child is, they are already doing it, that they have a situation in front of them, a problem that needs solving, and they have to do some cognitive planning. Well, if I do this, and then maybe if I do this, and uh, I think it might solve my problem. Um, it also teaches time management, right? We ask kids to get something done. Well, how are they going to do it? No, they're going to break it down into steps. First, I'll do this, then I'll do this, then I'll do this, then my thing is done that I was asked to do. All right, so really, I mean, it sounds crazy, right? But these tiny little simple shifts are really, really strong foundational pieces for your child's development and will make your in-home time so much easier so much less stressful. Here's the plan. Take a nap, wake up, have a snack, then we get to play outside. 
Couldn't be simpler, right? They always knew they were going to play outside at some point during that day. But now they know when and what they have to do to get there. Remember, I am all about long, long term skill based results. That's how I caregive, that's how I teach, and it's how I live actually through all the, I continue to try to do as much personal development for myself as possible because just because I'm 40 something and just because I've done this a million years doesn't mean that I'm done growing. We're growing with these guys. Um, so the last thing I wanna talk about is revisiting, right? Just brainstorming a bunch of stuff, putting it in some type of order maybe, and then leaving it there for the rest of the day is not going to do anything for you. You have to revisit over and over with the kid. Okay, we've done this, we've done this, we've did, 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 did. All right, now we're here. Now we're here. Now we're here. And at the end of the day, what a cool celebration. You can look over your visual schedule and say, look at all the things we did together today. I remember how much fun it was eating grapes with you. My favorite song during music was Wheels on the Bus. What was yours? Listen to the conversations you can start, the links you can make. Wow, I had so much fun during that music time. I wonder if we should do that again tomorrow. use this time. Here's your opportunity. And I'll be back every day with more strategies, more psychology, and more explanation of why these things work, why they matter, and how they are going to make your time at home much more manageable. Um, tomorrow, what are we talking about tomorrow? Hmm. Ah, Tomorrow, we are talking about the power of predictable and guided transitions. All right. See you then. Bye.